Hello, hello, and welcome in to the War Within Dungeon Invitational. I'm here, Sean, with my co-host, Rolly Rods, and we are about to walk you through the rookery with this group of five. Rolly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Sean. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. As you can see here, our team is dealing with what has been known as the Evoker DC issue. It's sort of their thing now. Anytime Evokers load into a dungeon, they've been DCing at the start. But then we get right into the action as we head down the steps. Now, normally, I've seen this pull be done where they just jump right off the face, but it looks like some of the DPS in this key were a little bit eager to get going. How do you feel, Rolly? Do you like to wait for the tank to pull, or are you uh, someone who likes to run ahead and grab some mobs? You know, as a ret paladin, um, I just like to run face first into things. We just don't die. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I charge right into battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ret paladins are looking quite strong. In this dungeon today, we are seeing a protection warrior running the Colossus build. As well, we have a Havoc Demon Hunter, a Devastation Evoker, a Disciplined Priest, and a Windwalker Monk. Windwalker's got quite a few significant buffs in War Within. Uh, as we see them cleaning up the trash pack here that you need to kill before activating these Storm Riders to travel over to the Rookery itself. Uh, do you think Windwalker is going to become meta this season? Yeah, I mean, huge rework. I've seen nothing but good takes on mm -hmm. the re on the Windwalker uh, rework, so I expect them to uh, to definitely gain some value in the meta. Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. The Warcraft devs have definitely been cooking. And speaking of cooking, this pool being set up here by the tank Drex is a little bit mental. He's grabbing everything on the left side of the room here to clear all of this trash in one pull before the boss. This is a very technically demanding pull. As you can see, there's a lot of ground effects to dodge, and these uh, griffins will launch themselves at the players. When you see a big pack pulled like this as a rep paladin, what is the first thing that goes in your head? Wings. Pad. <laughs> yeah, Damage. Fur. Juicy pad, juicy pad, juicy wings. There's wings everywhere on this screen, but this team seems to be holding this pull together quite nicely. The heals coming in here from Taliesin are quite strong. Nobody's dipping below health at all. And it looks like they're about to wrap this up and get ready to pull Cryos, the first boss here in the Rookery. Cryos has a few mechanics that are you want to watch out for, including Chain Lightning, which can jump up to three players, as you should be about to see here shortly, after he does his unstable charge where he launches at a player. Have you had a chance yet to tackle Cryos in the Rookery? I have not. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Hopefully your first time in goes as smoothly as this fight is going. This is a very well-organized group, and they appear to be playing... Uh, together quite smoothly. You're going to see here soon the Lightning Torrent. Cryos will teleport to the middle of the room and do a frontal, uh, which is a blast of lightning that will then travel about 25% of the room. The thing about this frontal is it moves extremely fast. We have seen teams on the PTR, or sorry, on the Alpha, who have had to try and dodge this using uh, uh, roars, using Windrush totems. We had a mage try to blink through it. It is a punishing, punishing frontal to get hit by. It includes a four second stun, but this team made quick work of it. The masterful placement by the tank there uh, made that uh, easy work of that uh, that boss fight. And as we head down now below, we're getting ready to pull some more trash. I need to get closer. It looks like, so uh, as you drop down here, there are feathers you can grab on that first platform, but it looked like the tank decided to forego those and just use their heroic leap at the bottom to trigger uh, not dying. And it looks like they're just they're patiently waiting for the rest of the team to show up before attempting what I can only imagine will be another monster pull here in the alpha role. Yeah. And have you had a chance to play much on the alpha? I have had very little chance to play in the alpha. Are you the type of type of player who prefers smaller pulls or bigger pulls in the dungeons? What's your test preference? Once again, as a rep paladin <laughs> player, I'm always looking to pad. Right. So uh, I, I, I generally love the bigger the pool, the better bigger the pull the better yeah as a as a tank player myself and i know as a lot of the healers uh that i play with we've we've been desperately asking for bigger pulls so that we can just feel something anything at all uh because a lot of these mobs in normal leveling dungeons aren't hitting as hard as they should or as hard as they might or as hard as they will uh in in heroic and above uh, so it's nice here just to get an opportunity for those people to be able to test it and as you can see this pull here uh, was broken up into two this entire hallway done in just two pulls which probably could have been one pull had the tank been a little bit more aggressive here i think they would have been okay and we're about to chain in another pack as these dps are absolutely blasting now we had a chance to look at the logs of this pull uh, after the fact, and uh, the Devastation Evoker looking quite strong. Is there a class on the PTR right now, on the Alpha right now, that isn't looking incredible? You know, I've actually seen 
Affliction Warlock is actually also looking really good, which is very surprising considering they're not very, they seem to not be very good right now in retail. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice that uh, everybody, we're at the point right now in the alpha where everybody seems to be living in that, that, that moment of, you know, hope. Everybody has that hope that, hey, everything feels sort of good right now. And we're looking forward to the future. Uh, as you can see, another entire room pulled by this group. They are executing this masterfully. I'm excited to see what they can do uh, later on in the season here in the War Within Alpha Dungeon International uh, as they continue to grow as a unit uh, because they are showing some some really good coordination here. As we see this trash pack now, I expect that this trash pack will get pulled into the boss if they survive long enough. Look at those health bars melt. And we're now approaching Stormguard Gorin, the second boss of this dungeon. Now, on normal, he only really has a couple of small mechanics. Dark Gravity will pull you in. Uh, you just need to run out of that. And then he will also do a Crush Reality where he jumps and smashes the earth. And there, as you can see it, he expels those, those void orbs. And again, another boss going down quite quickly. No Lust used here. They're obviously saving it for the last boss. As you can see, that dark gravity mechanic happening and this boss is about to go down uh what of the hero talents would you say yeah. really are the ones that you're most looking forward to testing uh, i know, am loving game? templar uh ret right now just the 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 being the name templar just carries with it so much weight of like i'm a damage dealer i am a justice dealer as a paladin i'm really down? looking forward to uh templar ret Mm, yeah, the the paladins, rep paladins are quite strong right now on live, uh, so it's exciting to see if they go into the war within with that same level of strength. Is there any world where you wouldn't be a rep main? No, not even close. None. Okay, that's good to hear. That's good. We like that. We like this. We stand the people who have their mains. Uh, we're entering the last room of this dungeon. Now you have to clear all of this trash around the edge before you can fight this last boss. We have seen this tank do this pull as one entire pull. Uh, however, upon doing that, it bugged the last boss out and they didn't spawn. So as you can see, he learned from that lesson and he is now smartly breaking this up into two smaller pulls as opposed to one large pull. And there, again, a lot of ground effects. This is a very technically demanding pull for any range DPS. And you can see flying in there from the top, the Stormrider Vacrum. Storm, he is going to throw Hammers on the ground, they'll be indicated by a blue circle, a blue lightning circle, and those deal damage and stun the enemies while doing no damage to the players. So it's something that a, a you want to try and move your mobs into if you can, or if they're already in it, leave the minute there. Uh, and you can see here we have uh, one coming in now, so there is the hammer toss, and smartly the tank leaves it in there and those mobs get stunned. And he should be about to chain in the last pack now before summoning the final boss of this dungeon. Um, now, the normal leveling dungeons so far on Alpha have received quite a good uh, response from the players, and I, I hope that that continues forward as we see more of them unlock. What do you think of the Mythic Plus setup uh, for Season 1, where we're only going to get four of these instead of all eight? I like it. You know, in in Dragonflight, we kind of got all of the uh, all of the Dragonflight dungeons, and then now in, in Awoken, we are getting them all again. Um, so we had a really good break, but I think spreading them out throughout the expansion is a really good idea, and I think it's a plus. Hmm, excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's it, it, it does keep the Mythic Plus season sort of uh, fresh when you're not running all of the same eight dungeons all season long. And we see now that the final boss has been engaged, Voidstone Monstrosity, which is sort of like a Taros uh, clone here. It's going to do a few different mechanics. There's a frontal that will be cast on the tank. Players just want to avoid it. And as you can see, there's purple circles on players right now. Those just develop void zones. You just want to run those out and not drop them under the boss. He's also going to summon three void chunks that we want to, or four, sorry, four, four void chunks that you want to DPS down right away. If left to reshape, they will form a uh, void stone awakened. And it's uh, just a little mob that you'll have to kill. As you can see one here, this group was nice enough to let them spawn one so that we could see what it looks like. Um, so we want to make sure that, that the void stone chunks get burnt down to avoid that happening. <laughs> get it? Avoid that happening. Uh, and during this fight, Stormrider Vokmar is also launching his hammer at the void stone monstrosity, dealing 20% of its base health and shattering void chunks from its body. Um, 
And again, this team made quick work of this. Not surprised at all, based on the, uh, the skill level in this group, to see them have completed this dungeon in just over 10 minutes. Uh, right now, uh, we're going to, before we cut down to our on-the-field reporter, Shadow, who is in the locker room ready to ask some questions of this team. Uh, Roly, uh, any final thoughts on the dungeon? It is a very short dungeon. Uh, I know a lot of the problems right now some people have are like these massively long dungeons in M+. It's really nice to see Blizzard taking the time and taking that feedback and us now getting shorter dungeons for faster runs. Mm, that's an excellent, excellent point. You know what? Until this exact moment, I hadn't considered that. Uh, short dungeons are the way to go. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We will see you at the next War Within Alpha Dungeon Invitational when we will look at the metery.